Welcome back everybody, hope you're doing well. Spring is here, so that means it's time to set up a little pond again. Last year I made a really simple mini pond for my balcony using this cheap plastic barrel that I found in my local garden center. It's only 45 centimeters or 17 inches across, so I think it holds maybe 40 liters or 10 gallons of water. So it's not very big, but big enough for some small fish. Now since this was my first time setting up a pond, I kept it really simple. I started with some aquasol and gravel on the bottom of the barrel. I made a plant basket with various pond plants that would sit right at the water level. I also added a dwarf water lily and that was a pond complete. After about two weeks, I added a small group of tiger and guppies, as well as a few shrimp. Now, even though this was super simple, I enjoyed it a lot. The plants grew like crazy and of course the guppies were breeding as well. Unfortunately summer doesn't last very long over here, so after a few months I had to take it down again and move the fish inside. So now it's time for round two. This one's going to be a little bit more advanced. I went back to my local garden center and bought a second barrel. The plan is to create a little water feature that will connect the two barrels and turn it into one system. First thing I had to do was create a little platform for the second barrel to sit on. I still had a few pieces of scrap wood lying around, so I cut those up to create a small stand. Once that was done, I painted it black to make it less visible. Now if this was a long term project, I probably would have to coat the wood with something and make it a bit more weatherproof. But since this pond is only going to be here for a few months, I'm not really worried about that. With the second barrel in place, it was time to move on to the water feature. Now I absolutely love the sound of water, but I don't want a Niagara Falls experience on our balcony. I just want a gentle trickle. So in order to achieve that, I'm going to use a drain pipe. I bought a few PVC elbows, a longer pipe and some PVC glue. So I started by making a cutout in the top barrel, and since it's made from plastic, this was relatively easy to do. After that, I just started putting pieces of PVC together to see what would be the best fit. Once I was happy with the layout, I glued everything together. Now I'm planning to keep different fish in both barrels, so in order for the fish in the top barrel to stay there, I decided to make a little guard with some window screen mesh. I used a little bit more PVC glue to keep it in place and cut off the excess. The only thing left to do now is to secure the drain pipe, and for that I'm using some clear silicone glue. I made sure to use silicone that is safe for aquariums as well. Twenty-four hours later, everything was looking good, so it was time for a little test run. I filled the top barrel with water so I could see how well the drain pipe would work. Everything was working as expected, I just had to make sure the barrel would sit completely level before moving on. Now I'm sure some of you are thinking like, Mark, that looks absolutely ridiculous, what are you doing? But just trust me on this one, okay? I'm gonna hide the drain pipe with plants and hardscapes so later on you should barely see it. So the next step is to get the filter going. Since I don't have any electricity on our balcony, I decided to go for a solar power pump. I never worked with these before, but after reading some reviews, I bought one that was a little bit more expensive. I will leave a link in the video description, but this one also has a 50 milliamp battery, which means that it should also work even if it's a little bit cloudy. I was really curious to see it work, and since it was quite sunny that day, I decided to do a little test run. As soon as I connected the little solar panel, the pump started working, and I was happy to see it was generating a decent amount of flow as well. The next step is to turn the pump into a little filter. I still had a piece of drain pipe left over, so I made a small hole for the tubing and stuffed both ends with some filter sponges. I then placed the filter in the lower barrel, covered it with a rock and did my best to hide the tubing and the wire as much as possible. So now we can really bring this pond to life. Since I have a lot of hardscape materials for my planted tanks, I decided to use some of it to decorate the pond a little bit. For the water feature, I stacked a bunch of rocks on top of each other and placed the filter outflow in between. 
Here's how it looked after I was done. So the pond is almost ready, we just need plants and fish. It's a little bit too soon to add the fish, uh, we still need to wait for the nitrogen cycle. And also it's a little bit too cold at night, it's now beginning of May and at night it drops to about 5 degrees Celsius. So I'm just going to wait a few more weeks, but we can add plants. So I'm cleaning my local garden center to see if they have some nice pond plants here. The garden center had a great selection of pond plants, but I actually decided to keep it simple. I just bought a few different types of floating plants, as well as a lily. Okay, fast forward is now end of May. Pond is doing really good. I actually just came back from the garden center, bought a few more plants just to bring a little bit more color in this corner here. Now, since about three weeks have passed, it's now ready for fish. So I still have the, uh, the guppies from last year. They're currently in this little bucket, acclimating for the bottom uh, barrel. But well, since we have two barrels, we can actually add two different types of fish as well. So for the top barrel, I want a different fish. So after this, we're going to go to the fish shop, see what they have available. You have all seen the title of this video, so you know exactly which fish we're going to get. I've been wanting to keep Japanese rice fish for a while now, but they are not easy to find. Luckily one of my favorite shops here in the Netherlands has them in stock on a regular basis. These fish are absolutely perfect for a mini pond, because they are very hard and adaptable. They grow to a max size of 1.5 inch or 3.8 cm and should be pretty easy to breed as well. Now if rice fish are not for you, or maybe you can't find them, you have a few other options for an outdoor pond like this. Obviously guppies, platys, mollies and swartails, but also white cloud mountain minnows for example. These come in a few different varieties as well. So now that the pond is completely finished, let's quickly go over how much I spent. The two barrels were $16.95 each, plants were $55, PVC was $20, the solar pump was $50 and the fish were €30. Euros. So all in all this was not really a budget setup, but that wasn't a goal either. If you want to create something low budget, I would just follow my last year's pond video. And if you still want a solar pump, I would just buy one without a battery as they are much cheaper. If you got excited about setting up your own mini pond, there's a few more things you want to keep in mind. First of all, direct sunlight. Like Small ponds like this, they tend to warm up really fast, especially in summer. So Place it in a position where it doesn't get too much direct sunlight. Over here, for example, it's kind of tucked into, way to, into a corner and the sunlight is kind of going like this. So it doesn't really get too much direct sunlight. Really helpful to kind of prevent algae as well. Another thing we should talk about is water changes. Now in the pond that I made last year, I didn't do any water changes. And I'm not planning to do any water changes in this pond either. Simply because we have very little fish and quite a lot of plants. Like the floating plants, they multiply quite quickly. They really clean the water, even having a small filter now. And here in the Netherlands, even in summer, we still get a little bit of rain as well. So that also kind of cleans the water, you know. But it depends on the setup. Like if you have more fish and less plants, you might want to do a few water changes. But if you set up like this, water changes shouldn't really be necessary. I'm sure some people are going to be afraid of mosquitoes as well. But from what I've experienced so far, if you have a few fish in your pond, then mosquitoes are not really an issue. I think mosquitoes also don't like, their lay their, like to lay their eggs in moving water. So if you have a little pump, if you have some water movement, then you shouldn't have to be afraid of mosquitoes. Alright guys, that's our mini pond completed. I really enjoyed making this one. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to smash that like button. Thanks for watching. 
See you guys next time.